First of all, Mr. Rappold, let me start with you. What about the conflict that exists regarding the use of timber, or rather the non-utilization, in order to increase the sink effect, but also there is also incentive to use more wood-based construction, as you said. So how do we strike the balance here? We need a discussion, a dialogue. Of course, I mentioned these uh, conflicting interests and objectives, and we need a debate. And we already have that within Austria with the forest dialogue. It is a dialogue pro process with many stakeholders, and we address exactly this problem. At the last forum last month, the Austrian Wood Initiative was also the subject of debate, and we discussed these fields of problems. We depend on, of course, the requirements by the European Union, so we recognize this conflict protecting versus utilizing. What we want to achieve with our law is that we no longer, or that we don't use more than we can grow. We don't have this acute problem, but the problem will arise when we use more than we can grow. But this is a conflicting objective, of course, and it, it is about striking the right balance, really. Currently, we still have enough timber on stock in order to avoid this conflict. What about the situation in France, Mr. Lejeune? Did Mr. Lejeune disappear? All right, then let me move on. Another aspect that has been mentioned today, rewarding services to the environment and the ecosystem by forest. This is a current debate in Germany, and Mr. Ruppelt is the same discussion going on in Austria? The question is, the payment for forest ecosystem services is being discussed in Germany. Is this also something you are considering? Thank you very much for the question. Um, I, I would say that I, I believe that this uh, discussion is, is stronger in other parts of, of Europe than in Sweden. It is, of course, there in the debate, but it's not a main topic of the debate currently, no. Mr. Rappold, what about you? Well, of course, it is an ongoing discussion and going down from the European level. Of course, we have discussed this reward scheme regarding biodiversity and environmental protection but also resilience against disasters. We have the Alps and mountains, and of course we have had this debate in this regard. The question is how do we reward storing carbon in the environment? And this debate has arrived in Austria, of course. Given the uncertainties, it has been addressed, uncertainties regarding damaged timber and so on. It is about ensuring that we have a long-term storage of carbon, but of course we might have storms and then this carbon storage no longer exists. So we face certain troubles regarding the establishment of this concept in Austria we need to also take the discussions in Europe at European level into account. Currently, we have our reservations regarding this approach. Oh, Mr. Lejeune has rejoined us. Yes, maybe I'll repeat the question for Mr. Lejeune. I didn't know if he heard it. Renovate, uh, rewarding ecosystem services or forests, a topic that is discussed in Germany. Is it also a topic of debate in France? Yes, it is. We have large amounts of uh, stocks of timber, and in construction, we use softwood uh, timber mainly. So the challenge for us is, well, 
to look at hardwood timber and to increase the share of hardwood timber in construction. But carbon storing, of course, is a topic that is being discussed. As Mr. Ruppelt said, we are also bound by EU provisions. Hence, well, I do believe that we don't have a lot of scope for action. We need to increase the use of hardwood. Um, but, of course, we look towards the EU for different regulations. Uh, one quick question. Could you please keep the screens uh, stable so I can better look at our speakers? I will continue with my questions that I have here. We have representatives from three different countries here today. We heard their presentations. The question is, what can we learn from each other? What can you learn from each other? What can we learn from each other? Mr. Rappold, would you like to start? Mr. Rappold, your microphone seems to be muted. Okay. What can we learn from each other was the question. What has inspired you or impressed you when you heard your colleagues from Sweden or France? Well, we can learn a lot, of course. In the past, we have seen that in other sectors, our forest policy at EU and international level, climate policy, and so on. What hasn't been as developed is forest, or rather timber or wood policy. I think there are countries that do forest and wood policy in some fields, but not as much. And we see that there are synergies we can use. Also at EU level, we need to establish this policy. We see these countries, also Germany or Finland, not present today. Well, I do believe that it is in, this, in the interest of forests themselves to learn from each other. Take, for example, research. There is a lot of money invested in research in the forest sector. We all face the same questions. So it is um, about really using synergies in the best way possible and also sharing knowledge. Mr. Lejeune? Well, the forestry sector has been, well, accelerated in a way because we consider it a sector of the future. As I said in my presentation, currently there is a big program of um, large building skyscrapers in a way. And the objective is to use the Olympic Games, uh, the Olympics as a uh, a way to show what is possible with wood-based construction. Everything is supposed to be wood-based. Now we need to switch to more efficient uh, approaches. We also want to use the potential of sawmills. We want to expand them. and. Um, we need the engineering of wood products. In order to do that, we still have some ground to cover compared to our colleagues from Austria and Sweden. I think you are doing a bit better. You have many things already established. Our production in France is still weak, but it is ex accelerating. And we have a large stock of Douglas firs that we can now use. Mr. Anderson. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, I, I think there are 
two parts of this question. Um, we have the, the policy aspect of it, and then we have the sort of implementation um, work so, so in the forest aspect of it. And, and on, on the policy side, of course, I think we have, we have a lot to learn just to exchange on each other's uh, strategies, on the policy being developed. Uh, we're all facing, well, partly different, but also very much the same um, challenges, issues. Uh, some issues are, are truly European. I'm talking about uh, climate, I'm talking about rural development, um, uh, innovation, uh, and, and um, you may uh, you mentioned and we've all uh, uh, addressed uh, the European Green Deal and, and what is going on in Brussels. So I think there we have, of course, uh, very much to learn from each other. And and uh, um, and I think we are. I think we are. We. Are, I'm also Sweden's representative in the Working Party on Forestry in Brussels. And and. Um, I mean, we, the, the German presidency in the EU last fall was, of course, excellent. And I think we had a lot of very good exchanges on the work on the council conclusions on the future EU forest strategy. Uh, we are, of course, anticipating the French presidency uh, next year. So I think there's, uh, there are many um, possibilities and areas to discuss, to learn from each other, and uh, between the member states develop uh, um, uh, common answers where there are common answers to be found. Then, of course, looking at the ground, uh, we are also facing uh, similar challenges uh, in our forests. And I'm talking uh, about uh, the bark beetle, not least. Uh, we are all facing the effect of, of climate change, um, storms, fires, uh, excessive pests. Um, and there we can really learn from each other, sharing best um, practices, um, I mean, uh, um, I, we know that the uh, center Europe is, is even heavier plagued than us by the bark beetles. So of course, we can we have a tremendous, uh, tremendously much to learn from each other. And I also want to make the case for the forest Europe process, which is also a, a very important process uh, on the policy side, where to share best uh, practices, knowledge to develop uh, policies on a on a voluntary basis, and that's an enormously important uh, platform as well. So, yeah, the, that was the long answer. The short answer is yes, we have a lot to learn from each other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I have another concrete question from Lena Eck, and I start with you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, what are your view on high fossil countries wanting to use your forest for climate compensation? There be losing opportunities for substitution. Substitution. Um, that's a very good question, and I think um, it's a question that we uh, that probably will be discussed more. Uh, and I think I've talked a lot about um, balance there before, but uh, but uh, from from the Swedish side, it's it's quite clear that I mean the the forest is a carbon sink, but it is also equally important a source of substitution of of uh, CO2 intensive materials. So uh, we cannot just have one aspect there. We need to have both perspective. Okay, ich weiß nicht ob. Uh I don't know if you, Mr. Lejeune or Mr. Rappel, would like to intervene again on this question. No, I can see them shaking their heads. And another specific question before we conclude. Where do we find the necessary raw materials for the bioeconomy or biorefinery? Raw material for bioeconomy, biorefinery come from? If I may start, please. Yes, please. Brilliant. Thank you. For Austria, one thing is clear. Sustainability is the bedrock for us. It is our pledge. We know where we can see growth, where we can use opportunities, where we have four million additional timber in our national stock. And we need to put everything in this framework. We also know, and we have seen over the last couple of years, that we have seen larger amounts of damaged timber. We need alternatives. We need alternative utilization opportunities for the raw material of timber. It will also always be in the interest of cascading use to look at energetic utilization. So 
I, I think it is implied that the energetic use, well, that, that is not really a question for Austria at the moment. Right. What is the current situation in France and Sweden? So our sawmills always face difficulty finding a market for their byproducts. Recycling is, all, is becoming ever more important, and timber is also affected by recycling. For example, paper. So the chipboard industry is using an ever-decreasing amount of timber. Also, the pulp industry is using less and less. So currently, the bioeconomy is, is not facing a huge demand. It will take maybe another five or 10 years so that there will be pressure. But at the moment, we have a large amount of stocks and we are not facing difficulty at the moment, and we don't foresee any over the na next uh, couple of years regarding the supply. Thank you very much. I, I think um, the, the, the often heard expression cir circular bioeconomy mm -hmm. is, is one answer to the question. Of course, you know, we, have, we, we will have to develop a circular bioeconomy. And, um, and what that is, uh, is, is not for me to, in detail, uh, give a, uh, an answer to that would take too uh, much time. But I also think that innovation is a key aspect here. I think mm -hmm. that we are using our um, the raw material that we get from, for example, our forests uh, in one way today. I think that it is only the imagination that adds uh, sort of a limit to what I think that we potentially could do in the future. So I, I, I really want to emphasize uh, innovation, new innovative products uh, as a part of, of uh, the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So almost at the end from the discussion, I want to ask you, after four years, Carter, uh, für Holz, uh, what are your wishes? Maybe Mr. Anderson, you can start. Uh, that I will get invited again to this uh, uh, lovely event. Uh, no, I think I think that this is an excellent initiative uh, for for two reasons, uh, for several reasons, but mainly for two reasons. I think that the debate uh, that you that you enable by this initiative is really excellent. And I think that debate is absolutely necessary, um, both uh, from the point of view of, of sharing experiences, but also to, to, to connect um, um, interests from various countries, sectors perhaps. Um, so I, I really think that uh, such platforms will be encouraged and, and can continue in the future because uh, certainly um, society needs platforms to discuss uh, issues like this. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Lejeune on Mr. Lejeune, Mr. Rappold. Yes, I can only agree with that. We want to join the next charter and we might want to prepare a bit better next time. The exchange of good of best practices is for us very important and we would be delighted to be part of the next charter and the next event. I can congratulate you again on the charter. You are a pioneer. You are paving the way within uh, Europe and many countries are only starting to develop strategies and programs for this sector. So you are a pioneer because you've been doing this for a couple of years and you have been doing great work. And I wish you all the best. Keep up the good work and make continue this uh, charter. It is good that you are rec reuniting stakeholders from Europe as well. Thank you for your encouraging words and thank you for your contributions too. Und Herr Rappelt, ich glaube, Sie hatten es gesagt, wir haben kein There was no representative from Finland, as you said, Mr. Rappelt, but we will have an afternoon session after the break and Dr. Mark Polai will be with us from Finland. So if you have time, feel free to join us after at the discussion. 
and thank you, all the best to you.